everyone. How are you today? Hope you are all staying safe and sound and we wish you good health. What's happening guys? COVID is like a turbulent situation. There's so much turmoil in the global economy and its impact is being felt and resonated across different industries. And I'm sure all of us are impacted. We feel like we are in a story with an unclear ending and we don't know what's going to happen. So the theme of our current presentation is regarding rebooting your businesses and helping you expedite your digital acceleration to get you empowered in the current phase of making sure that you conquer COVID-19. We also want to emphasize either you get disrupted or be a disruptor. And as Alpha Data, we would like you to be a disruptor and not get disrupted. With that, let me just set the context and define what is new normal? We all know what is new normal. There is virus threat everywhere, as you can see from the graphics, and this has become the new norm, the new reality. But we endeavor and we gear up to revert to our normal business, and we need to ensure that pandemic doesn't aggregate further, and we, we overcome and make ourselves even more robust with our processes being more agile and sound, just in case it rebounds. What I'm going to do in next half an hour is not only to set the context, but also to enlighten with you with some specific use cases which we've uniquely articulated around the theme of conquering COVID-19. We are combining smart access management along with our solutions from robotic process automation partner called UiPath whereby you'll get a good flavor of it. And I'll give you three examples articulating that. And then the next half of the presentation will be actually walking you through those demos and we've organized some role plays as well. I hope so far it's clear. Feel free to interject. Keeping the objectives in mind, what are your biggest objectives in the current situation? Safety is of paramount importance, and we've never realized it as much as we've realized it in the last two to three months. I am sure you can all agree on this. Operational efficiency and optimization are the biggest charters for any of the senior managements and all of us now. The cost pressures, they have never been that bad. And adjusting to these ongoing cost pressures where business is slashing and economic turmoil is being felt is again inevitable. Also other considerations, including still keeping on the acceleration of digital transformation at a good pace, making sure that smart buildings and the overall safe environments are seamlessly integrated, I guess I'm sure are on the agenda for all of you as CIOs. Before I progress further and get into the actual use cases, I will agree with you on the challenges, but what we will do and ensure towards the end of this presentation is that you have good takeaways in terms of certain use cases, which you can immediately take to your business in terms of access management, visitor management, whereby we are combining robotic process automation with artificial intelligence, empowering your digital employers, as well as ensuring the safety and in, in terms of contactless solutions. And that brings us to some of the top considerations for rebooting businesses as we try to get back to normal. I mean, health check, optimized schedules, social distancing, and digital employee empowerment. You can go on and on. This also is in line with the overall theme that UiPath, one of our esteemed partners who are also co-hosting this event with us today for robotic process automation as well as other digital transformation offerings from our side enhance, making sure that we have theme or a vision of your path, which is incorporated, which is like robo for every person to empower employee as a digital employee in terms of making sure that all the mundane or repetitive or normal boring activities are taken care of and an employee can be effective. I want to pause at this point and I want to hand over to our moderator, Naveen, so just to take a bit of polling and figure out what are your top considerations so that we can make it more meaningful and interactive going forward. Okay, so just moving on. So far, we've looked at the top considerations. We've also looked at what is going to help in terms of rebooting the businesses. 
So what we've done today is obviously around the theme of conquering COVID-19, we've come up with some interesting use cases, essentially looking at how RPA can be combined and coupled with other use cases, especially smart, uh, you know, access management. But uh, as you all know, robotic process automation, which makes sure that all your repetitive tasks are taken care of, have largely been established in certain categories and predominantly in the areas of finance, accounting, and banking, and many other repetitive tasks being taken care of. So what we've done is we've divided that into three categories. Uh, first one, let me just quickly give you a heads up on employee productivity. What could be the possible use cases you could think of? Of course, in interest of time, I will not go through each one, but if any of these are of your interest, we can have specific sessions taking you through those in details. So I'm taking certain examples around employee productivity and augmenting the overall productivity. Retail fraud detection is one of the popular use cases, whereby robotic process automation could help you in checking multiple databases for indicators of suspicious activity and uh, entering those reports in clients' accounts and tallying with others. Similarly, you could have other application development corporate IT use case under, again, employing employee productivity uh, enhancement. This could help the IT teams to manage application development, thereby automating reviews and other rule-based tasks end-to-end. -end. This could also apply to customer service, where you could use it to simplify process of creating a debit or a credit card and disputing by automating it with different movements. Again, auto account reconciliation, supply chain are very popular use cases under employee productivity. Uh, speed of execution is another category whereby you have other popular use cases, which also include something like, which is also applicable for all industries is data extraction. Again, data extraction could be, you know, reviewing the documents from selected, any of the portals or files or extracts. And this can really incorporate and extract the relevant data and updating it into multiple databases. We could go on and on with several other use cases under this category, including data migration, multiplicative data migrations, in enhancing process quality, and what you see on the screen there. Again, uh, there's another, another category under which you have process quality, whereby you also enhance the process quality, looking at various sectors in terms of either the security access management or customer order entry or supply chain, HR, uh, in terms of adjustments of payroll and validation. So I'm sure by now you got a flavor of different kind of use cases which are applicable for robotic process automation. And it's a hot topic because it helps you in terms of automating and accelerating digital transformation. But for the theme today, I'm gonna talk about something very interesting and unique. The ones which you are aware of and the ones which we covered now are what we can do, but this is the theme of our topic today. Smart access control combined with robotic process automation to help you with contactless and an end-to-end -end journey to make sure that all your controls are taken care of, as well as overall end-to-end -end automation and combined with artificial intelligence empowers every digital employee. Now let's get into specifics, seeing is believing. I'm also gonna try my best to walk you through certain video clips as well as in the next session, my colleague from UiPath is also helping us with a live demo where we'll do a role play with between me, uh, Nidhi, and him, and we'll take you through certain scenarios so you get a good flavor. I hope things are clear so far. Feel free to interject. We'll anyway have a dedicated question and answer session of about 10 minutes, and feel free right now also to send your questions while, I, while I'm presenting. So smart access control, and this is something which Alpha Data has put together, but what are the blocks for this? This area is really drawing a lot of traction and attention from customers as businesses get back to normal and they're forced to go back to their offices. So areas like facial recognition and temperature measurement, you are saying uh, that whenever we are getting into any premises now with malls opening, any of that, there is basically more or less a physical proximity of you know, somebody monitoring your temperature. Uh, and you know, making sure that you are within that limit. But what I am trying to put here, as with my team, we have come up with solutions and integrated smart access 
management solution, which is a contactless way of measuring the temperature with thermal cameras, with some advanced AI algorithms for facial recognition images combined with the other blocks that you see here, like a disinfection tunnel, which you could pass through. And also it could do certain checks prior to entering and the automation of opening a tunnel or a disinfection system uh, door in case you're wearing a mask. If you're not wearing a mask, for example, it doesn't open. As well, uh, it, this could be combined with the access management platforms, as well as non-contact elevators, uh, each one of them is a subject, and in case this is of interest, we are happy to take this. But more importantly, I want to show towards the end how this use case is combined with RPA, as well the other areas like safe distancing or uh, crowd management, people counting, and occupancy management. So far, I hope it's clear. Just to give you also a glimpse into the kind of steps that are involved in the smart access management, so level one, let me just take you through a mock-up process, for example. What are the operating procedures or what are these steps involved here? So encompassing the smart access management, first step is facial recognition. So if you're, your facial recognition with that, if the mask is detected and your temperature is being measured and it's within that limit, then it takes you to the next step whereby the door opens or ideally you can have a sterilization or a disinfection tunnel, which can be also tailored as per your requirements. This could also have integrated attendance and surveillance access management system. Also, there could be safe distancing as well as smart elevator control panels in that. And we could also combine those technologies with advanced cases of virtual agents as your COVID citizens for either gamification or crowd management or advanced analytics for your management or any of that. So the uh, cases are unlimited and the scenarios could be built as per your use cases, but this is kind of an end-to-end -end scenario. Now, when we were devising this smart RPA, what we were feeling is that, uh, you know, we, we were missing still the picture in terms of automating this. And that's where we thought RPA could really help. Now, I, let me just come to that in a minute. What you get out of what you've seen so far is things like, you know, body temperature being measured, mask check is being done. Uh, and all of that being done, your image is being captured, employee name is being captured, as well as occupancy management from the solution that I just spoke about in terms of capturing whether the actual occupancy is within the regulated guidelines or stipulations, like they say 30%, and could be heat maps prepared around that, as well as it could be combined with some alerts that could be given on your mobile. So once all of this is done, just let's see what what kind of a video clip, for example, can depict this for you? I'll just give you a minute to go through this. I hope you can see this video clip now in terms of occupancy management. So you can see on your left, you can see people passing by and they are being, uh, you know, there uh, there is a system, there's a solution where which basically looks at your occupancy alert. And you see on the right, when the percentage exceeds, it says stop because the store or the office or whatever is full. This is kind of a flavor of occupancy management. And what you're seeing, seeing now is kind of advanced facial recognition, whereby you can see even if you're wearing mask, no mask, even if you're wearing sunglasses, your face is being detected with some advanced algorithm. Yeah. See the three images and three clips. And you can see that person is still being detected despite all the scenarios. So what I described earlier is combined with some of this technology to get, give you a feel of it. But more importantly, these symptoms, you know, are being captured and there could be certain health bots or assistants to basically have contactless uh, in interaction with you to make sure that overall you are being traced as well as you're being safe, as well as you're being empowered in terms of getting back to business. I wanna stitch the entire story now at this point. I have a, I have actually what, given you a glimpse of high level considerations, businesses in terms of gearing up, as well as describe the smart access solution. And putting all of this together is where we are talking about something like a productized 
you know, RPA bot solution, whereby different kind of steps what you see in front of you are taken care of. So visitor registration and additional capacity check, meeting management, the overall health check, as well as checking the overall schedule. We've uh, actually, for you, uh, for this specific uh, event, we've put together a couple of those flavors together in terms of certain use cases. So let me give you a context of that. And then for the next half, we will take you through certain demos, which will elaborate this further. I want you to visualize a scenario. Uh, what I described to you, for example, the smart access management, we were coming up with this, and then we came with a challenge that uh, all of that is fine physically checking all your temperature, wearing mask, no mask, but what happens when a visitor comes to uh, register for a particular office, who will greet him? We also want to uh, avoid any contact there and wanna make sure that his uh, visit is seamless, his overall customer experience is seamless, and there is no jeopardizing of any of the health for the host or for the office or any of that. And we actually faced it from one of the customers where we, position smart access management, the components that I described to you. And they said, we've got a couple of hundreds of visitors coming every day. How do we make sure that they are also being attended in a very seamless, contactless way? So we came up and orchestrated what you see in front of you. And I think this is gonna be relevant for every industry, every sector, for all of you attending this event with us today. So there is a chatbot that initiates conversation to get the visitor details. So if I am a visitor and I visit some of the office, so there could be a chatbot greeting me. This is like an you know intelligent receptionist. I have another slide on the intelligent receptionist, but let me just take you to the workflow before we get into the actual demo with our colleague from UiPath. So the chatbot initiates the conversation. He gets my visitor details my health status and my travel details so far. Uh, this could also be combined with the smart access management solution that I shared with you earlier, whereby the, all the metadata could be coming from the temperature monitors, as well as from the uh, you know, other facial recognition checks. So once all of that is being provided, a bot fills the registration form based on the input of the chat bot. The chatbot actually verifies, checks with the host, first of all, regarding his availability. And we just saw the capacity planning solution. So as per the stipulation, the bot will automatically check whether as per the current real time, you know, uh, population within the office or that premise, the capacity allows the bot to get into the uh, area. If the answer is yes, so the decision box allows him to inform the host about the arrival and, the, uh, and then thereby the overall gamification could also be taken care of for the visitor. If the capacity is of course preventing him from entering, then he could be paused at that point and there could be other checks around that. This is one very simple use case which could be integrated to an entire smart man management access solution I spoke about. And you can see this end-to-end -end process could be handled by RPA with contactless combined with AI from virtual assistants. So this is one example. Let's take another example and describe the intelligent receptionist as well. So what are intelligent receptionists? I mean, I would like it like a game changer that, you know, we are talking about chatbots or virtual assistants. And if we combine that with an RPA bot and the virtual receptionist can welcome the visitors, and uh, instead of handling the manual and repetitive check-in procedure, we could actually have a scenario whereby the chatbot and the RPA can work for making sure things like you know, Q&As, gamification, and overall registration, as well as notification can be taken care of. You see, for example, some of the messages in front of you, whereby the intelligent receptionist is greeting the visitor, checking, uh, which categories he wants to, uh, you know, get access to, including FAQs, including any human support, or just simple things like guiding him to the restroom or whatever. And you could combine areas of gamification, like I said, with that, checking his appointment, making sure that with occupancy he's being checked in, or against the occupancy uh, stoppage, he could be prevented from checking in at that point, and he could wait for some time. I hope so far, again, you got a good gist of this. 
This could also be relevant as we as employees, now we are getting back to offices. So last week, we and our management were preparing the schedule for how we should ensure that we get back to offices while taking care of the regulations from government, making sure that the, uh, you know, that the percentage of population within the office is not more than 30% at given point. So, for example, if I'm an employee and I want to check what's the best time for me to be in the office, I could send an email to the bot to check occupancy for a particular time to visit my office. The bot can actually look into the entire schedule and provide the real time statistics about the occupancy. Of course, I'm assuming all the smart access management and the occupancy solutions are integrated in the background. And the bot does the intelligent checking and overall automation of this process. If the capacity is below 30%, bot indicates the day when capacity is available. And bot also informs HR about the employee visit. Again, uh, this is not limited to these four steps. You could have various extensions and scenarios which could also be very meaningful as per your business. This could also be integrated to Active Directory, it could be integrated to your overall access management or time and attendance system. It could also lead to the smart elevators and all of that. Uh, but I hope you're finding these relevant as we resume businesses. There's one more which I will not steal the show from my colleague Prajwal, who's actually going to take you through the demo of this as we do a role play on this. This is more around the HR survey. It's called the Employee Health Bot, basically, and uh, I'll let the explanation be given by him. But again, this could be a scenario where the end-to-end -end smart access management could be combined with an automated bot survey which comes from HR to any of the employees every morning. And the report is being sent to HR and uh, management in, again, a very seamlessly automated way with end-to-end -end process being combined of, you know, with the robotic process automation. With that, uh, you know, I'm just going to end my presentation and I want to leave you with a video. But of course, at this point, then we will start getting into the more use cases relevant for COVID-19. I will just play a video and then I leave you with some thoughts. Then I'll hand over to Prajwal. And then one day, the world changed. It said, you want to see scary? I'll show you scary. And like that, it took away the thing we love most, the thing we need most, being together. Businesses closed. Hospitals were overwhelmed. The world seemed to stop. It asked for heroes, nurses and doctors and paramedics. But as they fought on one front, another appeared, as insidious as the virus itself. Testing and paperwork and supply chain issues. Creating barriers between the healthcare worker and the patient. Help us, they said, help us do our job because nowhere in a medical oath does it say anything about paperwork. So they sent in reinforcements, and they called it robotic process automation, to clear a 160-day registration backlog in a single day, to provide more accurate test results in one-third the time, to reduce the screening time of healthcare workers to four hours from five days, to cut the processing time of an application from 45 minutes to five minutes, to accelerate the distribution of loans to help keep businesses alive. This isn't just about the coronavirus. It's about helping to solve the greatest challenges in medicine, business, life. Faster, more efficiently. Think about what's possible if we eliminate drudgery, time-wasted repetitive tasks. This is where hope meets technology so that we can all go back to doing the greatest thing, the most valuable thing, the thing that says we're not afraid anymore, bringing the world back together. Great. I hope that was clear. It was audible. Yeah. Yes, it was clear enough. Great. Thank you. And I think the message is very clear. I just want to wrap up from my side. So I guess COVID is going to be there, and it's there currently. And it's the new norm. It's a new reality, but we want to help you in conquering this. And we want to help you in accelerating your digital transformation with technologies, including robotic process automation, which can be combined in the current scenario with uh, smart access management and other seamless solutions, including AI. So thank you. And at this point, let me hand over to Prajwal, 
who can take you through certain demo and use cases over the next 20 minutes. And we will have last five to 10 minutes for question and answers. Thank you so much. Over to you, Prachwal. Thank you, Deepika. Um, okay, let me just share my screen. Okay, um, so in continuation to the discussion, uh, what Geetika has already showcased, some of the some of quite interesting use cases around uh, smart access management and uh, employee health check or uh, uh, survey bot. So today, I, I wanted to give you a live demo or showcase a live demo about um, health screening bot um, that is specific for that is not specific to an industry or respective of the organization. It is for any company as such. As we resume back with uh, with along and as we started accepting, you know, going back to work while this invisible um, virus is also around us. So um, we the, the most important factors, especially for the for the employees, is about how can they maintain the well-being of uh, of their employees. How can they make sure you know the uh, the safer and uh, you know the um, uh, virus-free or you know. Um, infection free written for their employees to get back to their work. So um, employee survey bot is a very quick demo. Um, the, the key pain point here is like, um, for instance, as you resume back going back to work now, how can they make uh, how can they make sure that you know there is a proper social distancing or uh, um, you know uh, is being maintained. So if somebody is is turned out to be let's say uh, infected person, how can they restrict them not to come to the office? Like what is the work arrangement is going to look like? And all of this is only possible um, based on, you know, on a daily basis, let's say the HR of an organization capturing these information uh, through by conducting some sort of a survey, recording this information um, uh, and, uh, you know, produce it to the management for them to make sure that, you know, the employee well-being is, is being taken care of. Um, so, as I said, it was a repetitive task on a daily basis, and uh, time is something very important because you cannot actually conduct the survey at the mid of the day or like when somebody, let's say, for instance, who is infected is already in the office, that would put, uh, uh, put everybody else, uh, their health under the risk. Um, so um, the, the whole um, uh, the benefit of automating these kind of survey bots is uh, one is 100 percent accuracy. Second uh, is about you know you will totally uh, eliminate the uh, repetitive or administrative task. And the third and the most important one is um, a timely uh, a timely management and also producing the reports to the management on, in time. So just to explain the, the, the scenario, the, the process flow. So the employee survey bot will be, uh, it, it can be an attended robot. Attended robot is nothing but it's a digital assistant that they usually sit on, let's say the HR machine or workstation and HR will basically go ahead and start the robot or it can even be scheduled and make it as a completely back office robot meaning to say that every day let's say for instance in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning i want the survey bot to be kick start and send the survey to all the employees in my organization it can it can do that like uh, hundred percent uh, without any intervention of you know the hr person to go and ma manually through it so Let's assume uh, for today's demo, I'm going to showcase the, uh, the robot uh, to run it as an attended automation, meaning to say I would go manually run the robot. Um, as we kickstart the robot, the robot will send a um, survey request form. It's a very simple um, uh, a Microsoft form that I'm currently using uh, as part of the demo, uh, but it, we are not limited or restricted to it. If you have, let's say, uh, some sort of a SharePoint form or even uh, a simple email with the predefined questions and you expect the people to respond to the same email, or you can even attach and send an Excel file, anything and everything is possible. You can, you can actually think of possible options around. For instance, the once um, um, the survey request form has been sent, now bot will basically send that to the, uh, it will go back to the active directory, uh, the organization active directory or the employee directory to retrieve the list of all the employees information such as their email address, their mobile number and, and so on and so forth. So once it retrieves those information, the, um, so depending upon the, uh, the, the popular conversation or communication channel, be that, let's say, uh, Microsoft Teams or Slack or through even WhatsApp messaging, the bot will basically send those um, survey requests to, the, to all the employees to respond to the survey. One of the key information here is, and um, the most challenging part when it was being manual was, um, let's say if the if the bot if, if employee has employee HR has to send the survey request to uh, let's say hundred plus of employees, 
Now, some, some may respond in time, some may not respond on time. So for those of those non-respondents, um, previously uh, HR had to manually go and keep follow up uh, by sending through emails or you know slack them or you know send them a message on whatsapp requesting them to participate in a survey and so on and so forth this was tedious and it was time consuming and also it was frustrating uh, especially for hr uh, for those of them like you know working for a bigger organization having more than 100 plus employees so now, because there is a bot which is actually taking care of this job, so bot will make sure that for every non-respondents on a timely fashion, it will keep notifying them through, let's say, Slack or through uh, WhatsApp messaging saying that you haven't responded to today's survey, please participate in the survey. It takes only, let's say, a couple of minutes to do so. So once everybody has completed the survey, so bot will then go back to the backend system and aggregate all the information or the survey details that it has been received from from multiple users and then finally it will generate a nice excel report with some charts um, showcasing the comparison between previous days or previous weeks of data and it will be sent that as an email uh, to the hr um, and it can even forward that directly to the management and so on and so forth so one of the things here is like while robot is basically keep on not, uh, um, following up with uh, non-respondents, it also send those notifications uh, via email to the HR saying that out of let's say 20 people or 100 people, um, few of them have, have participated in a survey and these are the people like, you know, they haven't uh, responded to the survey despite uh, being sending the continuous notifications and so on and so forth. So I'm going to just switch back to the UiPath Studio, uh, the design tool where you basically do this kind of magic. Um, so this is the workflow that a uh, very fairly simple workflow that we have built it. So now I'm just going to kickstart the, the robot. Uh, as I said, I'm manually triggering the process. So it is an attended type of automation. So I will just go ahead and say run. Okay, the bot has started. Um, it has just, um, these message box are just to add some context to the live demo. Um, so here, before um, the, I say go ahead, so I would like to showcase, you know, the employee list of users as well. Um, so for instance, here, um, since during the demo, I'm just, um, you know, uh, so maintaining the employee directory login in Excel. For instance, I have, um, I'm, myself, I've, I've added, so just to uh, to for the for the to pay, play a role play here. So I've also uh, had a Geetika and maybe those who are in the panel list to participate in the survey. So they basically will also receive um, a WhatsApp messaging with the in, with the link to participate in the survey. Let me just close this. Okay. So now I will I will say go ahead. So first, bot will basically go back to the, the survey report, uh, the administrative dashboard, and um, and it will basically retrieve all the information. At the same time, as you just saw it, it was initializing all the necessary uh, uh, applications. So one such application here, I'm using Slack as well as WhatsApp. So it has just initialized those messages. Now, as you can see, bot first logging to the, um, the survey dashboard, it retrieved the, the, the report, which was as of previous day. Um, and now it will start sending the, uh, you know, the, the follow up uh, survey request via WhatsApp as well as to the Slack messages. Okay, so the first one you can see that it has actually uh, sent, to, sent to myself. Um, as you can see here, um, so on the WhatsApp, if you see, um, it has sent to myself uh, with my mobile number that was added previously. And now it opened the Slack on the side by side and uh, it first identified um, whether it is a Slack message uh, user or not. Yes, um, it, it has seen that, yes, I'm a valid Slack message uh, user. So now basically it will go ahead and start typing in, um, you know, the, the, the message information. Uh, basically for this particular user on the slide. Okay, so once after that is completed, so now um, it will go to the next user um, in, in our um, employee directory. At the moment, we have next user as Deepika. 
So you, you must also expect a WhatsApp message is only because, and it will not send Slack message to you. Again, all this configuration we have set, like, you know, you can go ahead and request the employee for to set their preference. Uh, is it through Slack messages or they prefer to do uh, through WhatsApp or Microsoft Teams, if at all, if, you, if the organization has uh, multiple messaging platforms. So now um, I have made uh, configured in such a way that for myself, like it should go to uh, you make use of two uh, communication channel. One is uh, WhatsApp messaging as well as Slack. Uh, for instance, for Geetika, it should be only restricted only to uh, WhatsApp messaging. So as you just know, well, I received your WhatsApp and I'll fill the form and send it back to you right now. Please. So maybe you also must expect, um, uh, should have received an um, WhatsApp messages. As I see the bot has just sent a WhatsApp message to you. Yes, Sarjan, I just received your message. Now I will just fill the form and send back to you. Okay. So now uh, while, while it, uh, employees- uh, Prajwal, I have a question here, Maha here. So yes, um, in how many uh, people, like how many customers of contact would you be able to uh, help the bot do the messages to be sent? Do you have a limitation on the number of uh, people you can send the messages to, to the bot? Not really, not really. It can send from hundreds and tens to thousands. Um, and there is no limitation as such. Okay, uh, okay. So now while, while um, uh, bot is currently waiting for employees to participate in the survey, in the next one minute, again, the bot will automatically trigger because there is a schedule um, in, internally that I've, um, I've just um, started, uh, about to, uh, to start after a minute. Now I'm currently going to open from my mobile phone. I'm also going to participate in the survey. And Sajwal, I have sent you my form. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I can see that in the latest report, yes, uh, we have um, we have the data that being received from both uh, Nidhi and, as well as Gitikan, and you can even see my response is also added. So now bot is automatically picked up and it is going to, uh, to see if all the people have participated in the survey or not. Uh, since all three of us for the best of interest time, we have actually uh, taken part in the survey uh, on time. So it will not go send the second cycle of sending the notification. Instead, now uh, once all of them have participated in the survey, it will start going generating the Excel report at the background. And in the meantime, while the bot is busy generating the report, I can even show you the, the email that I just received as an HR. So let's say the, the first email where it sent the request to people. So out of four members, um, there was one member, one guy like he has already completed the survey for today, so it has marked as green. And rest three of us, um, including myself and Geetika and Nidhi, we were just received a form. So that's why uh, we couldn't, uh, we were not able to uh, participate in the survey at the beginning. So you can see that in an Excel report, it has marked them as red uh, for for the HR to to take a quick glance. So let's just give a couple of seconds more uh, while the bot is busy. Uh, generating the report. Hi, Pritch. Well, I have a question here. This report which you are generating, mm -hmm. um, can this be integrated with the access uh, control system? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so for instance here, um, again, this use case can be extensible to to whichever the you know the require whatever the requirement as per the organization. For instance, here we are sending the employee survey request for and we are requesting employees to manually enter the temperature details and and some of the information. Correct. But if you have let's say, uh, some sort of an um, electronic or automated access management system. Um, you can basically, um, you know, uh, integrate and ask the robot to fetch the data directly from those uh, data sources, and you can go ahead and, you know, uh, perform the same operations. Yes, Kajwal, and if I may add, that's the scenario that I was talking about with an end-to-end -end smart access management integrated with a virtualized agent, as well as you know, overall RPA end-to-end -end automation. So thanks, this is a very good question, and that's where the uniqueness of our end-to-end -end solution lies. Yeah. Okay, so now Bot has said that, um, um, you know, it has sent a um, uh, summary report to the HR and that completes the, the cycle for today. So now if I go back to uh, the survey report, if I open the survey report, now you can see, for instance, um, so 
we um, in the report we have a historical data, for instance, from 6th of June up until today. So today's data is this information. I can go and take a look at who all have participated in the survey, what was their response in the survey, and you know uh, the temperature that they they've actually recorded as well. Now, if I go back to uh, the, the, the the next sheet. Here, basically, um, I can see uh, a nice chart or a graph where explaining, you know, um, uh, what is the um, health screening stats look like? Um, what is the arrangement when in terms of work arrangement looks like? How many people have participated in the survey um, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So this whole operation, BOT was able to do it completely, totally at the, at the behind the screen, um, while, while it was also, um, you know, parallelly following up with the uh, with, um, um, uh, employees. So this is it. Um, it's a very quick demo. Um, as I said, um, this can this can take it and it can extend to to as per the business requirement of the organization. Uh, it can be integrated to the actual directory uh, to pull the information about their employees. Uh, it can even integrate with, uh, let's say, some sort of uh, smart sensors uh, to automatically capture the uh, temperature information and other information as such. And, and one of the most important um, uh, use cases that you can extend this is, uh, let's say, for instance, within uh, within your organization now that uh, the government has um, um, uh, has uh, introduced a sort of a procedures in terms of the capacity wise. Let's say within UAE, we are only, um, you know, we should run only with uh, let's say 50% capacity. Now, uh, this bot can even while those of them though uh, they are working or they are visiting the office and they are working from the office, it can even periodically conduct some sort of a survey, like say a couple of times or twice a day or three three times a day. Um, and also, it, it, let's say people, those who are trying to, let's say, book a meeting, uh, meeting rooms, it can even basically, um, you know, send some sort of guidelines uh, in terms of how to follow the social distancing and what is the maximum number of occupants uh, uh, should be there, you know, in a meeting room and so on and so forth. I hope that was quick and um, clear. So the next one is. Um, so, one. so the next one is um, the public welfare program for a safe return. So this is one of the use case um, which um, um, UiPath from APAC region uh, worked with one of our um, uh, um, consulting partner called uh, uh, Data Parts Technology, where uh, basically they built a solution around how they can uh, ensure a public uh, safer return uh, after the COVID, um, especially, you know, once they start resuming back to work. Uh, where part of the solution was um, it captures um, the, 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 the necessary or essential information about the COVID, such as like, you know, within your proximity, what is the status of the infection, uh, whether you fall under, uh, you know, which zone, be that a red zone or a containment zone, or let's say, are you are safer to go out? And uh, what is, uh, and also it captures uh, some sort of a, uh, uh, some sort of a public areas or you know the, the proximity areas wherein like you know uh, what are the what are the information or the emergency contacts of like in terms of what is the um, what are the uh, helpline information a uh, nearest hospital information for for uh, for uh, public citizens to to make sure that you know they can actually have a quick access to these information. So the benefits is like one is to mitigate the risk of infection based on this information. Um, let's say the, the citizens can make sure that whether it is safer to go out or you know what are the areas that they should not or they must not visit and 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 so on and so forth. Uh, second, uh, the next uh, use case is um, automating COVID-19 lab test results. This is specifically to uh, our healthcare um, uh, industry. Uh, during this time of pandemic situation, uh, we all know that how critical the time is in terms of, uh, you know, to control the spread of diseases. Uh, so a lot of healthcare organizations, the governments are working tirelessly in terms of, you know, making sure that, you know, they do the rapid testing and um, ensure that, you know, uh, they basically consolidate and update and release these lab test results that would only help them in terms of, you know, reducing the risk of spreading the virus. So. Previously, because now we were not prepared for this kind of pandemic situation, a uh, lot of organizations still they are following the manual operation or manual processing of these kind of a huge amount of test results. 
um, the resulting in you know um, um, they are resulting in in terms of taking a longer time to release the updated stress results. What UiPath solution has um, has, has come up with is it basically generates uh, it log into um, the hospital uh, patient care systems, be that a legacy application or a modern um, uh, interface applications, and it re it retrieves the the test results which are basically you know, scattered in multiple back office applications. And then it will basically apply some sort of an algorithms in order to, uh, to segregate the test results. And then automatically, once it generates the report, it will be assigned to, um, uh, let's say, the lead nurse within the hospitals or within, um, uh, within the infection center for them to, you know, to timely follow up and to make sure the, the, uh, to reduce the spread of viruses. The benefits of uh, benefits of the solution is one is to uh, to speed up the testing results of the COVID testing, um, um, and also reduce the the number of hours currently um, the, the the hospital uh, employees or the uh, the nurses that they are currently spending in terms of doing this admin work of generating the report. And, and third, and the most important one is since it was manual, so there is always prone to error. So um, now it is um, a bot which is basically doing the same steps um, and you can expect 100% uh, accuracy. And reducing the time, especially from, uh, for doing, from doing the admin job for the nurse or for the, for the uh, administrative staff is they can actually spend the same time uh, focused on you know, addressing or assisting the uh, more and more patients. And that's, that's, that's very important, uh, especially during this pandemic situation. So I have got a video of um, lab testing results. Um, in the video, um, I will walk through, um, uh, obviously I cannot play the uh, audio sound. So what I'll do is like, I will walk through as the, uh, the process starts. It will just being mindful of time. Can we wrap up in next two minutes? Because we just will just summarize and we have one more last poll to conduct. Absolutely, absolutely. So now as the, um, uh, as, the, uh, um, the, as I kickstart the robot, as you can see that the robot is now um, is going to log into some of the legacy applications such as patient care app, app, application. And um, you can see that um, now robot is by, by using the credentials of one of the nurse administrators. So it is logging into the application, retrieving and downloading the, the lab test results. And once it downloads the lab test results, it will export that into, um, um, let's say, an Excel format. And then it opens up the Excel document and, and it will start validating um, the results that has been generated or downloaded from the, from the back office application. So once it has, it has completed the, the validation of the Excel generated data, then it will log into our infection center application uh, this is where, let's say, the, the hospitals usually they maintain their patient details um, and um, manually they currently update the lab test results in this particular back office application. Now, as you can see that once the report has been generated, now robot is automatically logging into the infection center app, app, app as well. And now it is started adding in or typing in the, the lab test results for each of those specific patients who have undergone the, on the, on the, on the, on the, lab, uh, the testing. So once after that, it will also assign the, the, the dedicated or uh, the nurses uh, who could actually, you know, um, go ahead and review the test results and they can take necessary further actions. Okay, um, so that is it uh, from, uh, in terms of the last test results. Um, so since we have limited time, so what I would do is like, um, so I will actually open for, um, for the Q&A um, and, and during the, after, this, uh, after the webinar, we are more than happy to share the presentation uh, and, um, and, and from there we can take it further. Okay, um, there is one question. Uh, once the final survey reports are collected by the bot, is there any BR or report analysis integrated with the system or integration is possible? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, once the, the, the report data is collected from the bot, um, it can be directly pushed to any of your analytical software or the dashboards that currently you have it, let's say, be that a Power BI or you have some sort of a third party, let's say, uh, let's say Tableau reports or anything as such. That's, that's absolutely possible. From the integration standpoint, uh, as I said, um, it's, it's totally possible. The, the solution can be extended uh, right to left. Um, there is one question. Do you have use case for uh, payroll processing? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, I'll, I'm more than happy to share with you um, uh, to Noel. 
Uh, Deepika, maybe like you know, yes. we can follow up on this and Absolutely. the payroll processing use cases. Absolutely, that's one of the most popular use case. We will get back to you. Yeah, as well as for the employee onboarding. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, further, do we share how the licensing work? Um, thank you so much, Noel. Um, absolutely, we are more than happy to set up a follow-up session with you, and we can talk about you know the licensing models, and we can also walk you through uh, the use cases from uh, payroll, um, um, employee onboarding, and and so on and so forth. Okay, um, that is it from the Q and A um, um, panel, uh, Gitika. Sure. Thank you, Prajwal. Thank you, everyone. Naveen, do you want me to wrap up, or do you have any other closing comments? Uh, no, I think, but I think there is more questions. Okay, sure. Oh, okay, can could you please read not out? Not in the in the chat box. Not in the. Can you read out, maybe. Yeah. Did you check this question from Noel? Yeah. Yep, yep. That is being taken care. Of. Yeah. yeah. So one English. question from Mr. Nitish. These bots or tools for healthcare industry hospitals need to be in compliance with any association. Sorry, could you please uh, be a bit loud because I just... Yeah, okay, my voice. Uh, these bots or tools for healthcare industry and hospitals need to be in compliance with any association? Um, not really, but um, when they say like need to be associated with it, is it, are they talking about FDA and so on and so forth? Um, not really. The solution can be something very specific to the, to the, um, to the specific healthcare industry. Yes, I think this is the last one. Fine. If there are any other questions, feel free. If not, I'll just wrap up. And of course, you have my coordinates in front of you from our marketing team. Feel free to reach, reach out any one of us. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope within this limited one hour, you got a good glimpse and some flavor and some clues of the kind of use cases which could be very relevant, especially as we try to conquer COVID-19 and we gear up for resuming our normal work in this new norm. Um, and also, we are having a similar event next week, especially around the chatbot. So stay, stay tuned and feel free to join us for that. Meanwhile, uh, I really want to thank all of the team members also from UiPath and from our entire team. And on behalf of all of us, we wish you good, good and safe health, as well as uh, just feel free to get back to us for any further clarifications. We can do one-on-one -on -one meetings with you and reach out to you for your specific use cases. Thank you so much from all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kitika Prajan. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.